Welcome back to my series where I go over everything to create a perfect Garden Warfare 3. Last part, oh, well, not last part, the last real part, I went over the remaining Garden Warfare 2 classes and gave each of them two new variants. So, if you want to know how an imp in a monster truck would function, or a teleporting engineer, I suggest that you check it out. In this video, I'll talk about the variants for the Battle for Neighborville classes, as they were unfortunate to not get any in their debut game. With that all out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> the first thing I have to mention is that Battle for Neighborville's character classes were designed around the lack of a variant system, as shown through Snapdragon and Electric Slide having element-based attacks and abilities. When putting them in a game with variants, I was faced with a couple of options. One, I would replace the elemental abilities with more generic non-elemental ones, allowing for them to fit across all variants, or two, I could make each variant have its own unique abilities for each variant. I ultimately went with the second option, because it's not unheard of for each variant to have a class with its own unique abilities. Looking at you, imps. Because none of these classes have variants to begin with, I'll treat you guys by giving each of them, not one, not two, but four new variants. With an exception coming up. Showing this off, there's no one better to start with than Snapdragon. The obvious choice for a variant has to be Plants vs. Zombies 2's Cold Snapdragon, so I'll start with him. Breathing Icy Wind, this variant is able to freeze enemies in their tracks. He does 7 damage per shot, and he can fire for up to 6 seconds before taking a hefty 4 second overheat. For his abilities, Blue Blazes will be replaced by a precision based icicle shot that works like Space Cadet's Big Bang Beam. A direct hit deals 60 damage, and a critical hit awards you a 75% chill, making opponents super easy to finish off freezing. The Flame Wheel gets replaced by an icy version of it where instead of casting uh, damaging flames, it creates a defensive wall of ice. Each section would have 100 health, and they would stick around indefinitely. The next variant I have in mind is the Zap Dragon, based off of its counterpart in the Chinese version of PvZ2. He also works with an electric spray, dealing 7 damage every tick with Chain Lightning. His ranged attack has him shoot thunderclouds at an arc, causing lightning strikes wherever they land. The projectile itself only does 10 damage across all ranges, but the lightning strike does 15, making for 25 in total. His homing attack now uses ball lightning, making it a very slow moving projectile that has immaculate homing. It can chase its target for up to 10 seconds, and a hit does 110 damage. This ability also behaves like Electropy's projectile in PvZ2, where it electrifies nearby enemies as it passes by them, dealing 15 damage every second to each enemy within 10 meters of it. The Flame Wheel gets changed to become a projectile that summons a LITERAL Thunderdome, where everything within the area gets drenched with heavy downpour and lightning. It does 5 damage every fifth of a second to enemies inside, and the rain helps other plants, giving them a rate of fire boost while it's active. This lasts for 12 seconds, and the ability has an 18 second cooldown. The third Snapdragon variant on the list is the Flap Dragon. I swear they won't all be named after things that rhyme with Snap. This is the last one. He is kind of like a wind variant of the Snapdragon class, with a primary weapon that shoots concentrated hurricanes, which only deal 5 damage per tick, but they push enemies away from him. He also gets a double jump and faster overall movement at the cost of only having 125 health. His Blue Blazes ability gets changed into a wind charge that homes in on enemies, but when it hits them, it does a 65 damage and sends them absolutely flying. The Flame Wheel creates columns of wind that deal 3 damage and push enemies around. Both of these abilities recharge 50% slower than their base counterparts. In case you can't tell, this character is supposed to be fast, mobile, and disruptive. The final Snapdragon variant is the legendary Molten Fire Snap. If you have played Kirby in the Forgotten Land, you'll know how his primary weapon works. 
Similar to his unused legendary upgrade in Battle for Neighborville, he'll have an automatic weapon that spews out molten lava blobs that leave Puddle of Lava behind for an extra second. These initial projectiles have a harsh arc, similar to Yeti Chomper, and you deal 13 damage per shot, with additional fire damage. And the Puddles deal 3 damage every half a second. I'd like to mention that even though the Molten Lava Puddles are not technically damage clouds, they'll still behave like them, making this character compatible with the two damage cloud upgrades. As a legendary character, achieving a streak of 5 vanquishes, or shares, will grant you a 30 second long legendary mode that boosts your damage, speed, and gives you 25% damage resistance. The legendary mode also makes your Lava Puddles 50% larger, this character does not have any unique abilities, as he is fire-based like his original counterpart. Something to note about all elemental abilities is that they cannot be changed out between each other, like how you cannot mix and match the imp mechs. Moving on to the next class, we have Nightcap. The first variant will be Sludgecap, a toxic variant. In order to not completely undermine the idea of invisibility, this character's toxic aura will only be active while visible. On the topic of toxic auras, they will all have a general buff, making them deal 4 damage in a larger radius. Sludge Cap's projectiles do not pierce enemies, but they'll instead have a tiny bit of splash damage, and they fly in a plus pattern instead of X's. They deal 15 damage at close range, and go down to 10 at long range. Due to Nightcap's abilities being pretty general purpose, they do not need elemental variants. For the next variant, we have Flight Cap. Like Flap Dragon, this character aims to be quick and disruptive, at the cost of health. She only has 50 hit points, but has a triple jump and moves around faster than most characters. Her primary does 11 damage across all ranges and disrupts the momentum of opponent's hit. For example, a Super Brain's gliding around with heroic kick jumps would lose all of the built-up speed and grind to a halt if hit a couple times. These shots also carry ice properties, making you slow them down and rapidly drain stamina. In order to freeze someone, you need to successfully land 12 hits out of your 15 ammo clip. The third variant is the legendary Kitty Cap. She'll be a 3-round burst fire character, with the ninja energy slashes coming out at random angles in sets of three. They each do nine damage at all ranges, but they all spread apart from each other as they travel, making sniping incredibly difficult. She would have 30 shots per clip and a lengthy two and a half second reload. As per tradition, a streak of five vanquishes brings her into her legendary mode, where she now shoots five slashes simultaneously in a star-shaped pattern without any spread. Her rate of fire increases by 25%, and her reload time would decrease by 50% as well. Lastly, we have Bright Cap. This character naturally glows with varying colors that switch around. Each time you get a direct vanquish, not shared ones, the color changes. You may be asking, what's so significant about these colors? And to that, they determine what effect Bright Cap has at the moment. Across the board, deals 15 damage at close range, going down to 9 at long distances. Now, for the colors, the default is a neon pink, and while it's active, she moves 20% faster than normal. Secondly, there's neon green, and it grants her 15% damage resistance. And the last one, neon blue, makes her reload 50% faster. On that note, she has 12 shots per clip and has a 2 second reload. The next plant class here is the Acorn and Oak. Something to mention about all of them as a whole is that the co-op feature from Battle for Neighborville stays, and it gets naturally expanded upon as you can mix-match the kind of acorn passengers on the oak. I'll be streamlining things though by just making the tree turret weapon is just replaced by the acorn's primary weapon. For the first one, we have the Burning Acorn. While it isn't literally burning, it's fully capable of inflicting that onto the zombies. He has a fiery shotgun style weapon, 
firing burning chestnuts in a small trapezoid. Each hit does 25 damage, and he has 7 shots per clip. This weapon is fully range capped, as it does not shoot a projectile. For his mech, I mean oak, like I promised, this will be the return of the Torchwood. His primary weapon will behave like it normally does, but imbued with fire. It does not keep the infinite overheat and rate of fire boost from smoldering madness, though. His health gets buffed to 325, and his stats remain the same otherwise. For his abilities, they're pretty self-explanatory. He keeps the Leaf Shield and Blazing Blast, but the latter has its cooldown nerfed to once every 25 seconds, and it won't last as long. Lastly, it has a small wind-up animation to let enemies know that they only have one second to escape before getting roasted into oblivion. The Leaf Shield also only negates 25% damage. For the second acorn, we have the Gilded Acorn, based off of said costume from Battle for Neighborville. It will behave like an armored variant. He fires slower than the stock acorn, but his shots do extra damage. He also has 100 health and a larger hitbox, as extra health and the mobility of an acorn sounds like a disaster if he remains as hard as he is to hit. The oak will sport a massive 425 health, and he will be built more like a fortress than a tree, really. He shoots large chunks of petrified wood that behave like Jade Cactus's needles, but with a ton of extra damage. They do 40 damage for a direct hit, and do 25 damage in a medium-sized radius after 2 seconds delay. His abilities are built around defending, as his first one plants a seed which sprouts a huge tree barrier. They have a whopping 600 health, but they have a weak spot at the base where they take double damage. They are big enough to fully shield two Citrons stacked on top of each other. This ability only has one charge and has a 27 second recharge. His other ability has him root himself into the floor and become a massive turret himself. It works a lot like Cannon Rodeo, where you have 10 shots that do 60 damage each. It has a 30 second recharge, with each shot not fired, decreasing it by 3 seconds. The next acorn is the Mystical Birch Acorn. I'm sure you'll know where this variant is headed, but he works like Zen Cactus, having 7 shots that increase the damage in each one he fires. Unlike his spiky counterpart though, his shots suffer from damage fall off. Each shot does 8 damage, with it doing 6 more for each shot he has left. So, that means his final shot does 44 damage. For the fall off, they go down to half of the base damage at medium range. These shots also have no splash damage, and are fired at 200 rounds per minute. The number of shots he has remaining is represented visually by glowing butterflies circling around him. The oak is, you guessed it, the Sugar Plum Fairy Torchwood costume. This one doesn't keep the average Torchwood kit, so I'll go through his new one. His primary weapon is that of Swirly Magic Dust Launcher, whose firing rate increases the longer you fire for. It starts at 200 rounds per minute, and each shot increases the RPM by 50. It caps out at 800, and each shot does 3 damage at all ranges. Sounds pretty weak, right? The fun part about this character is that he has no overheat, allowing for you to hold down the fire button for as long as you'd like. The only drawback to this is your reduced movement speed while firing. For the abilities, the first one has him spit out some pixie dust at zombies, causing them to float upwards for two and a half seconds. Be careful, because even if they have a limited movement, they still have access to all of their abilities and weapons. It has a 24 second cooldown. The other ability is where the fairy exerts a magic aura around him that boosts the firing rate of all nearby allies. The effect lasts for 10 seconds, and it has a 22 second recharge that starts after the ability ends. The last acorn is the Acorn Overlord. He is a charge up variant whose shots do 9, 18, and 36 damage for each charge. Despite those numbers looking a little low, he charges up quite quickly, taking 1.5 seconds to reach full power, along with no movement penalties. He has 20 ammo, with each shot consuming an extra 3. This character's Oak is also a charge-up character, but scaled up. 
His shots do 20, 40, and 80 damage respectively with a 2.75 damage charge off. He has 16 shots, and each one consumes 2, 4, and 8 ammo. Like the acorn, these also suffer from damage fall off. However, they lose only a third of their damage at long range. Now for his abilities, he has a large tree missile that he shoots upwards that crashes down in an airstrike fashion. Think of it like the uplink bots attack, but stronger and on the plant side. It does 120 damage for a direct impact and does 70 splash damage in a fairly large radius. In order to choose a target, the airstrike locks onto whatever enemy you had your crosshair on when the ability starts. If there are none, it will try its best to land where you're looking. As you may have noticed, this ability just barely lacks the damage to instant vanquish a lot of classes, so you're best using it as a tool to either initiate or end fights with a burst of damage. This ability has a swift 18 second recharge. The other ability is a close range shotgun style burst that temporarily replaces your primary weapon. In fact, this is like how a scrapped legendary upgrade for Oak worked. This is way too powerful for it to be a primary weapon, so making it an ability worked well. While it's active, you move slower than normal, so you'll have to get up close for it to work best. Each burst does a whopping 100 damage if you land all 10 shots, and he has 50 ammo, enough for 5 bursts. You thought that was all? No! Battle for Neighborville actually added a fourth plant class, the Wildflower. This is probably the easiest class to design, as all I really needed to do here was make each of the variants a different kind of spawnable plant. I'm sure you can guess this as well, but I'll be doing the same thing for TV Head when it's his turn. However, I'll only be giving these characters two variants each. I'll start off with the Weed, who attacks with the melee slap attack that Wildflower currently has. The slap will also be removed from Wildflower's kit, as it feels like they gave the Swarm classes a little too much utility. The attack does 55 damage, and has the stun upgrade built in, disrupting the enemy a tiny bit. The other part to mention is that the right ability for him gets replaced with the Seed Spit. For all intents and purposes, this is only an aesthetic change, as the ability works the exact same as Wildflower's Bloom Boo. The next and final variant is the Hypno Shrew, who is a glorified ice variant. If you hit a zombie enough times with his Hypno Beam, they lose their bearings and start walking in circles for 2.1 seconds. Each shot does 16 damage at close range, going down to 8 at long range. Something to note is that this Hypno effect does not stack with the actual freeze effect, so you cannot chain stun anyone. The right ability also takes the form of a concentrated ball of hypnotic energy, which again, has no changes gameplay-wise. Okay, I promise I'm finished now. Hopefully you enjoyed the actual part 6 of this series, and a long one at that. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you later.